in this video we're going to go through the scripture, John chapter 13, verses 1 through 12. Now this is the story about Jesus as he is uh, washing his disciples' feet. And I chose this one because I thought it was really a good example of Jesus going the extra mile. The scripture is something that I'm going to say is for advanced learners. If you haven't done uh, sign language before, if this is your first time, even your second or third time to LCC to do signing, I would suggest that this is probably still beyond what you're ready to do. If you're in a family that does a lot of signing, if you have been doing signing since you were in the third grade, and now you're in the ninth grade, and the songs are just too easy for you, this is really a good place to start. Most of the participants that I teach this to, where I go to church, are generally ninth, tenth, eleventh, even more like eleventh and twelfth graders. So, if you're in that category, and if you're a third grader and want to do this, uh, I applaud you. This is the uh, more challenging thing to choose to do. And with that said, let's start learning the signs. This is the vocabulary part for John chapter 13, verses 1 through 12. You're going to have to fingerspell. You're going to have to practice because your fingers don't know how to spell Passover really quickly. <coughs> I'm sorry, I've got something in my chest. I've had it for two months and it's driving me crazy. Uh, so if my voice disappears, well, you'll see a blip in the tape and I'll come back later. Anyway, finger spelling, that's where I was. You're going to have to finger spell a few things. In a song, we try very hard not to finger spell stuff. But when you have text like this, you will have to finger spell. You'll finger spell Passover. And you'll finger spell Peter and Judas and Iscariot and probably several other words as well. Finger spell those words like Simon and just finger spell them again and again and again until they flow off your fingers. Passover. All right. The reason why I can do that so fast is because that's not the first time I've spelled the word Passover. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Go through and pick out and circle some of the words that you know you're going to have to finger spell because there's no sign for them. Okay? Once you've done that, then put them on a card. Put them on your phone. Uh, do something so that they're in front of you and you get practice finger spelling on them. Okay? All right. Also, this is a recounting of an event. Okay? Jesus didn't write these words. That might surprise you. It came from the Bible, right? No, John wrote these words. John wrote these words, and he wrote them as a telling of what Jesus did. So, when you start to interpret this, you really need to put yourself in John's shoes. Picture yourself sitting in front of a, a group of people who know that you were with Jesus. And you are telling them about this particular event. Okay? You might even practice reading it. <coughs> Excuse me. And reading it in such a way that you're comfortable with it and that you're telling the story. Okay? Interpreting is not just taking the words from one language and put them in another language and just kind of doing that mechanically. It is to uh, communicate. It is to uh, share not only the words but the feelings that go behind it. Okay? Alright, all that said is to get you prepared. Now, the second thing I want to say, is the second, maybe it's the fourth or fifth at this point, but the next thing I want to say is that we're going to do this thing in uh, phrases and sentences. And 
if you go back and you listen to one of the songs vocabulary, you're going to hear exactly the same thing I'm going to tell you here. We're going to do things in phrases and sentences because we do not speak in words. We don't. You might think, oh, I use words all the time, but we really don't speak in words. If we did, it would sound like this. And when we memorize things, we don't memorize things in individual words. We memorize things in the context of what it's, what it's being said. And we memorize them in phrases and in sentences. So as you learn the signs for this, yes, I will show you the signs for the words, but it's up to you to take those words and put them together in sentences. Okay, so like, it was before Passover, and Jesus knew that his time had come. All right? See how those kinds went together? It wasn't. It was before Passover. If you do that, one thing, you'll never get through it. It goes too fast for that. You're going to have to put things together. And it will help you immensely if you will just uh, do things in phrases and sentences. Okay. It was before Passover, and Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and return to the Father. Now, that's a long sentence. So, we're going to break that up a little bit into phrases, but even the phrases here in this one is long, all right? So, it was before Passover. Uh, little words, by now you should know we leave out. <clears throat> And we can condense a lot of these thoughts into something very simple. It was before. Alright. Long time ago. It was before Passover. That's one of those words you're going to have to spell. Now, if you want to try to get all the words in there, the signs are, it was before. Okay. But you can sign that all as, it was before it was before Passover, okay? And Jesus knew that his time had come. And, at the letter, at the A palm, excuse me, a flat palm, coming out into all your fingers together. And, Jesus, that's a sign you should already know, the touching of the palms of the hand, knew that the time had come, knew the time had come. All right? Now let's look at how I signed that. Jesus knew that the time had come. Jesus knew time happened. Okay? And I want to encourage think along those shortened kind of ways of doing it. We use words like that, the, to connect uh, a thought. That connection is made simply by your facial expression and the signs that you use in sign language. Okay? For him to leave this world and return to the Father. Okay? So, his time had come for him, now, for is kind of point to the forehead, just kind of rotate the wrist out. Him, I'm not going to go through my whole pronoun speech, but pronoun basically is a pointing. And Jesus lives upstairs. So we're going to point to him up there. And he's going to leave this world. He's going to leave. Now we can put in the word <coughs> this if we want to, or we can leave it out. Jesus is going to leave the world. We even left out the word the. Just leave world. We can see that he's leaving the world just by the signs. I don't need the the in there and I don't need the this in there if I don't want it. If you want it, this is the sign for this. Just pointing to the palm of your hand. He had always loved pronouns, and replace it with the noun that they refer to. 
you might see someone sign Jesus instead of he. Whichever is more comfortable for you is fine. If you want to do he, that's fine. If you want to do Jesus, that's fine. Had always loved his followers. Always loved his followers in this world. Well, let's go ahead and add that onto that phrase. He had always loved his followers in this world. Okay? And I would probably put the, this in there this time. Uh, whatever, again, you're going to be the one doing the interpreting on this one. I'm just kind of giving you some guidelines here. Uh, always, it's just a circling in the air. Love, like you're holding your teddy bear. Followers, this is Jesus, this is you, and you're tootling along behind them. Okay? In this world, in is just kind of make it look up, put your fingers in it. You can also do this world. In fact, that would probably be a better way of signing it. Just kind of look around you. This world. And he loved them to the very end. Now, we're going to leave the word very out. It's just an emphasis. But the emphasis is important, so we're going to have to emphasize it in our sign. And I'll show you how to do that. And he loved them... Okay, them, we're going to have the disciples, <clears throat> and you're going to see this throughout this, they're going to be in a particular place, and we're going to put them right here. There are 12 men sitting around a table right here. Okay, so when you want to re refer to the disciples, to this, <coughs> excuse me, to the disciples, we can just kind of point to them. All right, so he loved them. To the very end, to the end, to the end, okay? See that emphasis? That's the very part of this. Even before the evening meal started, okay? Even before the evening meal started, see how that went? Even before, and see, even is another one of those emphasis words. So this is before, the, and like when we started off, this is before Passover, right? Now, it's before. See the incredulousness on my face? That's the emphasis. That's like the, the very and in uh, the end. Even before evening meal started. Even before the evening, and that's just, uh, a turn of a cupped hand coming at you this way. Evening meal had meal started. Meal began, like you're starting your car. The devil had made Judas the son of Simon Iscariot. The devil had made, and it's really more had convinced, uh, convinced uh, Judas. And you're going to have to spell Judas. So the devil convinced or advised or something along those lines, counseled, uh, made him believe uh, that Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, practice spelling those, okay, decide to do betray Jesus. We're going to leave out the word to. Uh, okay, so let's put all that together. Even, bef even before the evening meal started, the devil had made Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, decide to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that he had come from God and would go back to God. All right. So now, the picture here, Jesus is sitting here on the table. Jesus knew that he had come from God and would go back to God. See how that was easily done? And Jesus is actually sitting with the rest of the people here. So Jesus knew... Okay, because I have already signed Jesus, 
I can point to Jesus within the group. Because Jesus is there with the group, right? Jesus knew that he had come from God and would go back to God. Coming is rolling towards you. Going is going away from you. God is like, like you're going to hold up a hand, put up a sign, and drop it in the, drop the post in the hole. All right. Uh, he also knew that the Father had given him complete power. He and I would probably go ahead and sign Jesus, or we can point here, or actually at this point we can point here. Whatever way, right in your mind, you're drawing the pictures. <clears throat> he also knew, also, his fingers here, and then finger, two fingers together back over this way. The Father had given him complete power. Okay? He, for Jesus, also knew pointing the head new, that the, and we only do that the, we just say the Father had given, given <coughs> him, him, okay, and it's like the A hand pointing towards himself, okay, or himself, or him, or Jesus, or however which way you want to refer to Jesus, uh, complete power. Complete. It's like a cup, and you just kind of shave it off the top because it is completely full. All right. Complete power. And it's like you're holding on, you're running strong power. Okay. <clears throat> so during the meal, Jesus got up and removed his outer garment. So, and you can, use, you can do so, or just leave the word out. The word so has no definition in English language. Uh, might even say, I, I don't know. I don't even know how I would interpret the word so. It's so nebulous in its definition. During the meal, Jesus got up, removed his outer garment. Jesus, okay, during, that's a D, going out and up, all right, during the meal, Jesus got up, and it's like you have a robe on, and you're going to take your robe, and you're going to drop it down, okay? He's going to take off his outer garment, and wrapped, okay? Because if I were to wrap my hand, I'd wrap my hand. If I were to wrap my head, I'd wrap my head. But I'm going to wrap my waist, so I'm going to wrap a towel, is that how it goes? <clears throat> he removed it and he wrapped a towel, it's kind of like you're washing your face, around his waist. So we're going to actually do this twice. In this. He put some water in a large bowl. He put some, and here, put some, we're signing the sign for pouring. Pouring, he put some water in a large bowl. Now we're going to combine those two signs really into one. It's a large bowl. This is the sign for bowl. This is the sign for large. A large bowl. And I have to get my cat out of this video. Uh, anyway, distractions. Then he began washing his disciples' feet. Then he began washing, and it's just like you're washing dishes, his disciples. Remember the sign for follow? With here's Jesus, and here's me tootling along behind. Put D's on it, and it's disciples. Because a disciple is a follower. Okay, it's kind of the same sign. Uh, the disciples' feet. You just point down to the feet and drying them with the towel he was wearing. And uh, drying, it's a, a kind of an exhale. Pronoun. 
with the towel he was wearing. Okay? I'm not going into a lot of detail on these signs. I'm hoping that you're getting them. If you have any trouble, you give me a call. Jesus answered, uh, Do you... Let's see. Sorry, skip the part. But when he came to Simon Peter, the disciple asked, But when he came to Simon Peter, notice where I'm fingerspelling that. I am pointing to Simon Peter, and I'm fingerspelling his name. I'm pointing and identifying. All right? That disciple, that disciple, that's how I'm going to sign that, that disciple, asked, Lord, Lord is an L coming from the shoulder opposite your elbow down to your hip on the, on the same side of your elbow. Uh, are you going to wash my feet? You going to wash my feet? Okay. Going to. There's no traveling in this. Again, this is a, an English way of saying uh, it's almost better to say you gonna. All right. Wash my feet? And the action is shown in the actual washing. Okay? Jesus answered, You don't really know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Okay? Remember, Peter is here. So, as you're doing this, you need to be focusing and speaking to Peter. And so, the signs for that. Jesus answered. Take from the chin, and just kind of answered. You don't, and that's from underneath the chin, not at the chin. Underneath the chin is don't, or not. It's a negative. At the chin, it's an M, which is a positive. So, you get these things straight. Make sure you get it from underneath the chin. You don't really, and this is the, is the finger starting at the chin, coming out, really, truly understand uh, or know what, and you're just going to come across your hand with your finger, I am doing. All right, see that I did that am there, am, doing. This is a sign for do or did or does or doing or dudding or anything to do with doing. That's what that is. But, and it's the fingers coming up like railroad crossings, okay? But later, at the L kind of rotating on the, on the thumb there, later, you will understand. You will understand. You, pointing, will, this comes past the ear, understand. It's like the light bulb coming on. Doing! Okay? And then, uh, you will never wash my feet, Peter said. Peter replied. Okay? So, here we have, uh, you will under you will later understand, or uh, but later you will understand. Turn a little bit, because you're no longer Jesus. You're now Peter, okay. And so you're now Peter over here, and Jesus is standing in front of you. So you're going to turn and face Peter a little bit, or face Jesus a little bit. You will never wash my feet, Peter said. Peter replied. Uh, never, I think, is the only new sign in that. Never is the just kind of sneaking a hand down like that. If you don't, if I don't wash your feet, if I don't wash you, I gotta remember this. If I don't wash you, Jesus told him, you don't really belong to me. Okay. Now Jesus is talking again, so turn your body a little bit. It doesn't have to be turn. In turn, it can be very subtle. Jesus talking, Peter talking. Jesus talking, Peter talking. Okay? 
Jesus is now talking. So Jesus said, uh, if I... Sorry for the minor glitch here. Uh, the recorder quit recording after 25 minutes. Imagine that. So, uh, picking up where I left off, I think I was at the place where I said, you know, you turn your body this way or that way. I am Jesus talking to Peter. I am Peter talking to Jesus. And at this point, I believe the right place to be is Peter said, Lord, don't wash my feet, just my feet. Wash my hands and my head. Okay? So, uh, Peter said, or Peter said, Lord... Don't wash just my feet. Wash my hands and my head. Okay? So, uh, Lord, L coming from the shoulder opposite your elbows, coming down to your hip. That's Lord. Wash, we already know. Uh, or, or don't wash just. Okay? Just is a finger kind of twisting in the air. Just. My feet, wash my hands and my head. Okay? Hands. Take the hand and kind of go to the end, and then take big this hand up and go to the other end. And that's kind of the way it works with a lot of body parts. You know, if it was an arm, you start from here. Uh, arms, uh, head. Okay? Something you just point to nose, eyes, ears. Uh, kind of like when you're teaching your little two-year-old. Anyway, uh, Lord, don't wash just my feet. Wash my hands and my head. Jesus answered, People who have bathed are clean all over. Okay? Jesus answered, People clean bathed. Okay. Uh, Better way of signing that. Uh, people who have bathed, it's kind of like you're scrubbing yourself, right? Bathed. Uh, people who have, and this is a sign for finished, and we're going to do this, you'll see this sign a lot. It's kind of like an ED ending. It means something they're done doing, okay? So, done doing bathing, all right, get that? They're so done doing bathing and are clean all over. Touch the head and then kind of go down. And just kind of look at it. I'm clean. I'm all, I'm, you know, I'm innocent. I'm here, right? Uh, all over. Uh, need only to wash their feet. Uh, Bathe and clean our oil. Need to wash just their feet. Need only, just like just, wash their feet. And you, remember they're all over here, you, my disciples, are clean. Except one of you. Okay, except is to like take, pull your finger up, one, one, is the number one of you, and they're all sitting in there, one of you, so just kind of circle, all of you, one of you, is the way you would sign that. Jesus knew who would betray him, him. Make it itself. Okay? Jesus knew who would betray him. That is why he said, except for one of you. Alright, did you follow that pretty well? Uh, Jesus knew, we all, that's easy, uh, who or who, either way, would, same sign as will, betray, okay, betray him, and we're going to put him over here, all right, that's what we're going to do that, we we'll betray him, that, why, is it, that, why, 
he said, except for one of you. Okay? Jesus had washed his disciples' feet. After Jesus had washed his disciples' feet and had put on his outer had put his outer garment back on. Okay. After, this is kind of on this side, we're going to go after. Jesus had washed his disciples' feet and had put on his outer garment back on. He sat down again. Then he said, remember he's talking to them, he said, Do you understand what I done? See the, the, the past tense thing that happened in there? Do you understand what I have done? Kind of makes the do a past tense by putting that in front of it. All right, and make sure that you have a question mark there at the end. And a question mark is just, you kind of just draw a question mark and put a dot at the bottom there. Do you understand what I have done? Okay. That is the whole scripture. And so, go through this slowly. Uh, I'm sure there will some be some parts that are confusing. If you have any confusing parts, uh, give me a call, send me a note. I'll help you out whatever I can. Uh, we'll even Skype if you want to. Uh, I can do that too. So, anyway, let me know if I can help you out. And good luck with this. I'm looking forward to seeing you there at LTC.